Solana, the Kingdom of Illumination, is located at the very centre of Wraith and is a shining beacon amidst golden fields. It was originally settled by pilgrims who were drawn to Wraith by an entity known as Sol. The true identity of Sol is unknown, but it is worshipped as a deity by all those who live within Solana. In return, the worshippers are blessed with the light, a unique form of magical power. In this video, I will cover everything there is to know about Solana. Locations, society, culture, and myths and legends will all be fully explored. So, let's begin with the most notable aspect of the region, the city of Solana itself. Solana and its core foundational beliefs are said to be guided by Sol themselves, as evident in its social hierarchy and architecture. The city of Solana is built symmetrically and based on the number 8, a reflection of Sol's divine will. The walls surrounding the city are made of gleaming marble layered with spellwork to protect it from physical and magical attacks. Within the walls are eight gates, each leading to one of the city's eight sectors. Converging at the centre of these is the Solarium, a magnificent group of shining towers. Within the Solarium lies the Library of Illumination, the Great Hall, the Amphitheatre, the Inner Sanctum, and various classrooms and training halls. Circling the outside of the Solarium is the Silvaris, Bountiful gardens filled with thousands of different plants from all over Wraith. Many of the plants within the gardens also include various herbs and ingredients used by the Light of Soul to create healing supplies and cast spells. The Library of Illumination is a grandiose archive of tomes and scrolls that draws visitors from all over Wraith. The library is as much of a sight to marvel at as it is a valuable source of knowledge. Its structure made from beautiful marble and intricate stained glass windows depicting the history of the city. In the centre of the main foyer is a group of statues, each portraying one of the five Grand Magisters that have led Solana throughout its lifetime. Any Solanian may enter and read from the library's shelves, but only scholars of the Light of Soul may peruse the hidden underground levels. The amphitheatre is a large, open area that can hold the entirety of the population of the city of Solana. It is used for all manner of public events, celebrations, and ceremonies. Lectures spoken by a magister on the doctrine of soul are a daily occurrence, with any visitor or citizen free to listen. The inner sanctum floats above the amphitheatre, and is where the Grand Council meets to discuss the well-being and future of Solana. Hidden beneath the solarium lies a heavily secured vault known as the Signaris. This vault is home to many ancient artifacts and powerful items from throughout history, and its existence is only known to the highest ranking members of the Light of Soul. While Solana is often only seen as the city itself, it also encompasses many of the surrounding areas. The most notable of these is the Northern Realms, a large area of land divided up amongst various noble families whilst still under the watch of Solana proper. Many other small villages are also under the protection of Solana, with its many knights patrolling the fields and defending the innocent from attackers making their way out from the Savage Lands. The government of Solana is one based on a council with religious importance. At the very top is the Grand Magister, a representation of Sol themselves. Only five Grand Magisters have led Solana in its lifetime, each given a title based on their vision for Solana. The first, Devout. The second, Adamant. The third, Radiant. The fourth, Beloved. And the fifth and current, Steadfast. Just below the Grand Magisters are eight Magisters, each one representing one of the eight sectors of the city. Together the Magisters make up a portion of the Grand Council, along with a hand-selected group of Archons and Templars. The rest of Solana's protectors fall into one of two groups, the Light of Soul and the Hand of Soul. 
The Light of Soul comprises over 30,000 scholars, each one trained in light magic. Whilst many are assigned to work within the walls of Solana, working as scribes recording and preserving history, others are sent out into the field alongside the Hand of Soul to support knights on expeditions. After eight years of training, seekers graduate to become acolytes and begin working within the Library of Illumination. It can take up to a full 20 years for an acolyte to reach the rank of scholar, although this is dependent on their talent, skill, and most importantly, dedication. At the top of the command chain of the Light of Soul are Archons. These individuals represent a single district within the city and are greatly respected and loved as protectors of the common folk. When an Archon is chosen to be promoted to a Magister, the festivities within their district are often said to last for many days. A special division of the Light of Soul are the Gemini, secret operatives that work in the shadows to secure the safety and prosperity of Solana. They hide in plain sight, and will often travel the land of Wraith gathering valuable intel to relay back to the Light of Soul. The Hand of Soul are Solana's protectors and warriors. These are the fighting force of Sol, and are tasked with the protection of Solana and the villages beyond. Each party sent out on missions are led by a Templar and a Lieutenant, and are also often accompanied by a member of the Light of Soul for additional support. The main bulk of the Hand of Soul are the Knights, skilled warriors who protect the lands of Solana with fervor and valor. After graduating from their training, New recruits are given roles as squires before becoming full-fledged knights. Those skilled in both fighting and light magic are enlisted under the Hand of Soul as clerics, capable at protecting the innocent and mending the broken. These noble warriors often travel in parties of eight, but can sometimes be formed into large war brigades of 64 members. Templars are the pinnacle of martial prowess within Solana, and are hand chosen by a Magister to serve a higher purpose. They are gifted with ornate armor and an embellished mask as a symbol of their status, which draws looks of respect and admiration as they walk throughout the city streets. Working as a counterpart to the Light of Souls Gemini are the Inquisitors, fervent warriors of the Hand of Soul dedicated to the elimination of heretics and cultists. Whilst the Gemini gather information of potential threats, the Inquisitors are the blade of justice that swiftly deals with the threats before they can come to fruition. Solanians have many special events that are a cause for celebration, but two noteworthy of these are the Solstice of Laurels and the Awakening Ceremony. The Solstice of Laurels is of major importance to members of the Hand of Soul, taking place just once a year. Squires are promoted to knights, and knights are promoted to higher ranks during this event. The solstice is as much a military tradition as it is a spectacle, with Solanians and visitors from all across Wraith visiting the city to watch the procession of knights making their way from the outer walls of Solana towards the Solarium. The Awakening Ceremony is a tradition that all Solanians participate in during their childhood. On their eighth birthday, an Archon will arrive at the home of the child and lead them to a special chamber within the Solarium. This room is filled with a wide variety of different items, each one representative of a trade or profession in Solana. Once the ceremony begins, an item within the room will begin to glow with Soul's light, revealing the child's destiny as chosen by Soul. Many families within Solana pass down their trades throughout generations, their craft being honed over many centuries. However, this is not always a given. A perfect example of this is with Dorinthia Ironsong. Her family was composed of renowned blacksmiths, yet she was chosen by Sol to become a member of the Hand of Sol and was gifted the sword known as Dawnblade. Solanians also have their own names for days of the week but still follow our real-world equivalent week structure. Starting with their equivalent of Sunday, we have the following. Solides, Lunides, Aedes, Verides, Exorides, Merides, 
and Vesperides. These names are inspired by Latin, and are most likely derived from words related to light, the sun, or celestial bodies. Solides relates to the word sol, or solar, a connection to the sun. Lunides, as a counterpart, is derived from lunar, meaning moon or lunar cycles. Ades could be linked to aether or aeons, a connection to the magic of wraith, or to the sky or heavens. Verides may be derived from vera, meaning truth or pure of faith. Exorides is drawn from the word exoria, meaning to rise or emerge, a symbolic representation of a sunrise. Merides could be related to meridian, a reference to the position of the sun during the day. And Vesperides has ties to the word Vespa, meaning dusk, twilight, or evening, and the setting of the sun. At the heart of Solana's existence is Sol, an entity worshipped by Solanians as a deity. Sol's divine will is carried out by its followers in all aspects of life from teachings and laws to even the design and architecture of the city. Sol's true identity is a mystery, but what is known about Sol is that it is the Aesir of Light. The true nature of its influence is a highly debated subject, but any discussion that may go against the teachings of the Light is considered highly heretical, with many alleged heretics being shunned, exiled, or even tortured or executed. No Grand Magister is as simultaneously important yet rejected by Solana as the first, the Devout. Thousands of years ago, the Devout became the first Grand Magister of Solana. A scholar of Sol, he helped build and design the city in Sol's will. However, due to reasons unknown, he began to denounce Sol's influence and humanity's growing subservience to the Aesir of Light. His heretical behaviour was condemned by the Order of the Light, who then executed his 13 closest disciples before casting him out of Solana. The now apostate found refuge on a remote island to the south of Wraith, where he built another home that allowed him to study the secrets of the world in peace, the Demonastery. Over time, the apostate studied further, discovering the mirror world Eorathiel, and the Demonastery's population grew with other like-minded individuals finding refuge in its halls. But Solana had not forgotten the Apostate's transgressions against the Light. The Hand of Sol eventually laid siege to the Demonastery and its denizens, forcing the Apostate to sacrifice his own flesh and blood to infuse the manor itself with his life force. This final act tore the Demonastery from reality, where it now sits in a liminal space between Wraith and Eorathiel. These events would begin a conflict between Light and Shadow known as the War of the Monarchs. This war waxes and wanes throughout the ages, but in recent years has begun to bubble to the surface once more. Amongst the most divine of legends within Solana are the stories of the Eight Heralds and Angels of Sol. Long forgotten by the majority of Solanians, the Eight Heralds came to the city as emissaries of Sol, who worked to better the lives of those within the city and Wraith at large. These Heralds each represent a virtue. Soraya, the Herald of Erudition and Keeper of Knowledge. Themis, the Herald of Judgment and Keeper of the Scales. Victoria, the Herald of Triumph and Champion of the People. Sekum, the Herald of Ravages and Slayer of the Shadows. Aegis, the Herald of Protection and Shield of Light. Avalon, the Herald of Rebirth and Messenger of the Dawn. Metis, the Herald of Tenacity and Pillar of Strength. Bologna, the Herald of War and Patron of the Blade. Through mysterious figments and the power of soul, the illusionist Prism has called forth these heralds as heavenly archangels to battle against the forces of Shadow in the War of the Monarchs.
And that is everything to know about Solana. Do you have any questions regarding the region? If so, leave a comment below. Tune in next time for another deep dive on one of Wraith's many regions. Until then, stay curious.